Welcome to Access Q Atlantic. I'm your host, John Moore. And for the remainder of the season, we'll be bringing stories from across Atlantic Canada to you. The six teams from across the queue, Acadie Bathurst Titans, St. John Sea Dogs, Moncton Wildcats, PEI Rocket, Halifax Mooses, and Cape Breton Screaming Eagles. We'll be talking to players, coaches, and general managers. We'll talk about their successes, as well as their failures off the ice. So stay with us here on Community One, a 30-minute show every week, right here on Community One. Well, if you follow the game of hockey, you certainly heard the name Nathan McKinnon, 17-year-old Halifax Moosehead Center, back recently from the World Junior Championships. He's a force with the Mooseheads, he's a force in the queue, and I had a chance to sit down with him earlier. Halifax Moosehead, 17-year-old Nathan McKinnon joining me. Nathan, tell me a little bit about the season to date. It's, there's been so much which has happened this year, but quickly look back at the last four months. Yeah, it's been, it's been a development, I think. Uh, you know, we have a good record, but at the same time, we're getting better, I think, each, as each game goes on. We're, we're facing new challenges and uh, overcoming them also. Uh, we've had a good stretch uh, as of late, and uh, hopefully we can keep that trend going. Nathan, when you look back over your, your minor hockey career, here you are at 17 years of age. I have to wonder, who has been a strong influence on you in the game and, and away from the game? Um, I think uh, my dad has been there for most, I uh, mean, you know, all my hockey career and uh, has pushed me to be the player I am today and uh, has done wonders for me. So uh, he, he's probably been the biggest influence. And a little earlier, I had a chance to uh, talk to a, a longtime friend, Fabian Joseph. Sydney, Nova Scotia native, who is an associate coach with the Moncton Wildcats. Very successful coaching career, was the head coach of the Dalhousie Tigers before joining the Wildcats and won a President's Cup with the Wildcats. Also, wore the sea for our Olympic hockey team. You'll enjoy this personality. I spoke with him earlier. Well, I think back then uh, I was uh, with the Toronto Marbles in the OHL at the time, and. Uh, I was done my junior career. I was drafted by the Toronto Maple Leafs, so I had an opportunity to uh, play in the American League uh, in, in uh, St. Catharines at the time or go with the national team. And, and the national team at that time had an ongoing team. They were based out of Calgary, and a lot of players uh, were given the opportunity to play the international game. And At that time, Dave King was the coach, and uh, it was a good opportunity for me to develop my skills as a, as a quick forward and, and a small forward to uh, to play in the international at the international level and, and try to reach my goal of playing in the Olympic Games and I was I was with the national team for four seasons uh, from 87 to 88 and I was unfortunate the 88 Olympics were in Calgary I got cut in September of that season after being with the program for two seasons and then uh, then I signed with Edmonton's organization had a couple of uh, two three real good seasons in the American League in Cape Breton and Halifax and then. Uh, uh, went back with the Olympic team in 92 and, and made a team that, that season. So 92 was a, a real good year for, for the Canadian Olympic team. We, we finished uh, second in the Olympics, silver, silver medal. We lost to the unified team and uh, I think they had 17 of their players go directly to the NHL right after the Olympics. So they were a hell of a hockey team and uh, then in 90, after the 92 Olympics I, uh, I went to uh, Italy and played for a season and then came back for 94 and played in Lillehammer and uh, was fortunate to be the captain of that team and uh, anytime you're a captain of, of the Olympic team it's a, it's a true, true honor and uh, we finished uh, second again, got silver again, lost in a shootout that time to uh, Sweden and, and Forsberg and companies. A personal question, if you'd allow me. Yeah. A year and a half ago, your mom was diagnosed with cancer. Tell me a little bit how that affected you and how, again, you're living in St. John, she's living here in Coal Harbor, and tell me a little bit how you've been able to deal with that. Um, I mean, it's been tough, you know. Initially when it happened, I was, um, it, it's not really fair for anyone to, you know, it's, it's a pretty uh, cruel disease and it, and it touches everyone pretty well, so. Um, initially I was, you know, kind of, asking why, you know, she's such a good person and, you know, she's so supportive and 
Um, so yeah, initially I was well, pretty upset, but um, at the same time, she, she was still able to, she, like she's not, she, she's good enough that she can travel and you know, her and my father came up quite often. So, um, you know, they were able to come see me play a lot in St. John and, and uh, you know, the coaching staff and the, uh, you know, the uh, owners and stuff in St. John were really good. They, they allowed me to go home pretty well whenever I wanted to. So I could, I could go see her uh, you know, when we had time off and stuff like that. So it's been, it's been, uh, it's, it's been tough, but uh, you know, she has a great uh, support group around her and, and uh, she's a strong, uh, strong woman. So um, I, I think she The importance of community for the Wildcats uh, is immeasurable. And uh, without the community, there is no Wildcats. And I think with that statement, it, it really uh, speaks to how we view the, the community as a, as a partner with, uh, with our organization. The third program we do is the RBC uh, Moncton Wildcats Skills Competition. Two years ago, we opened it up to Facebook, where the local area minor hockey associations can vote uh, for their association to host the Wildcats at their home arena. Uh, the first year we did this last year, uh, Sackville Minor Hockey won that and we had about 650 people show up to the arena. Uh, it was a great time. This year Salisbury Petticodiac Minor Hockey won that and we had again about 650 to 700 people show up. Uh, it's a fantastic way to engage in uh, the outlying communities of our Greater Moncton area and, uh, and we're certainly going to do that again next year. Welcome back to Access Q Atlantic. I'm your host, John Moore. I spoke earlier with Pierre Durapal, the Moncton Shediac native who was drafted by the St. John Sea Dogs. What a career he has had. Two President's Cup rings and a Memorial Cup ring. And now, the captain as the Sea Dogs rebuild. I talked to him earlier. Yeah, I mean, uh, I definitely started off my career pretty well there on a you know, a first place team. Unfortunately, we had to, you know, lose that final series to Moncton, but I think it was a great experience for me. And obviously the next year winning a Memorial Cup, you can't ask for, uh, for much more than that. And uh, I mean, winning back to back President Cup the year after that is, is definitely been special for me. And I mean, now, uh, you know, I'm kind of in a, a different situation being with uh, such a young team and a rebuilding team. So uh, it's kind of a new challenge, but I'm looking forward to it. 